Welcome back to Personal Protective Equipment and Assessments. I am Marcus Wiesaw, the instructor for this course, and my email and telephone number are listed on the screen, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at your discretion. Again, if you want to look at the objectives, we've covered those already, but if you want, uh, go ahead and hit pause on your video player, and you can review those on your own. For this particular module, we're going to continue the discussion on personal protective equipment and assessments by delving into what the PPE assessment really is. And so, just as a reminder, we have to go through the hierarchy of control measures. First, we address engineering issues. Then we're going to move on to administrative and work practice control measures. And finally, after we, we've done engineering and administrative control measures, we're going to look into what we can do with respect to personal protective equipment. However, the OSHA guidelines regulate that prior to putting any personal protective equipment in place, we need to do a proper PPE assessment. And that will be the focal point of part three and the remainder of our training course emphasis. And so let's go ahead and begin the PPE assessment process. And I'm just going to go over the process with you and what it entails. That way you know. And if you have any questions on how to properly do this in your workplace or if you're, if you're an employee that has questions about it, uh, feel free to call me or email me to discuss it further. But first we have to remember that PPE assessments begin with controlling hazards. And just to reiterate the fact that we cannot rely on PPE alone, we have to use engineering and administrative control measures first. Assessment and selection. A personal protective equipment should be matched to the particular workplace hazard. So we can't just randomly pick PPE. We can't just go and uh, use our best judgment, our best guess into getting this right. We have to put a little bit of thought into what uh, personal protective equipment is most effective. And for that, uh, we have to, in some cases, find a way to measure and quantify the different workplace hazards. For example, noise exposure. We gotta figure out how loud the workplace is. What can we do to address these issues? Uh, can we put a muffler on a, a very loud piece of equipment? Can we uh, limit exposure to employees by uh, only allowing employees to be in the area for so long? So we look at that and then finally we say, hey, let's look at some hearing protection like earplugs, muffs, and caps. So that's just a general example there. So let's go over the assessment guidelines okay? in order to properly conduct a PPE assessment. We'll go over a few guidelines that kind of outline how this is done and what to look for. So we begin first by surveying the work area. We're going to look for impact, impact noise, penetration, compression, uh, chemicals, we're going to look for heat or thermal energy, harmful dusts or particulates, light or optical radiation. Then we're going to evaluate the work area for sources. What sources are there? And sources, according to OSHA, are things like motion, temperature, chemical exposure, dust, light, radiation, uh, potential overhead fallen objects, sharp objects, pinch points, workplace layout or the design of the workplace such as perhaps ergonomics issues and we can go into that all day long and finally electrical hazards. Then what we're going to do is we're going to organize the data that we collect. So any information that we collect we have to make that meaningful and so we first organize it and then we're going to analyze the data to see what we come up with to see if there's any themes or anything that uh, becomes very obvious. Now, moving on to selection guidelines, a couple of bullet points here that I want to really stress and, and go over with you. Uh, first, I want you to become familiar with the potential hazards and the type of protective equipment that is available and what it can do. For example, we, we go back to hearing protection. You know the limitations of earplugs. You know that people don't always wear them right. You know that uh, for some people it's very uncomfortable. Okay, so we need to become familiar with whatever uh, personal protective equipment is indeed available to us. 
and we need to compare the hazards associated with the environment or the work environment uh, against the capabilities of the personal protective equipment. For example, we can overdo it. Okay, if we have a little bit of acid in the work area, as one example, like let's say we have hydrochloric acid and we have a liter of it somewhere in the work facility. Does that mean that anytime someone goes into the room they need a full chemical protective clothing bodysuit? No. So we have to match up the hazard with the uh, protective equipment that we're going to look at. And once we can do a good job of that, then what we're going to do is we're going to select the right PPE that works for that hazard. And what we're going to try to do is use the least amount of PPE to address the most amount of the hazard, okay, if that makes sense. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fit the employee with the personal protective equipment and give the employee instructions on how to wear the PPE, how to put it on, how to take it off, how to take care of it, how to dispose of it, okay. And the next step in the PPE assessment process is fitting the device. Okay, we have to make sure that employees are comfortable. I know that a lot of people are like, well, PPE is not supposed to be comfortable. PPE is supposed to be something you wear to protect yourself. Well, I will give you some professional advice. The more comfortable that PPE is for employees, the more likely they are to wear it. The number one reason employees fail to wear PPE or they wear it improperly is because they're uncomfortable. And believe me, I've seen some crazy things. There was one time uh, an individual was wearing a respirator and he had cut a hole inside the, the half-faced respirator so he could get a cigarette in there and smoke. And so we see things like this all the time. Other times we see people wearing fall protection harnesses that are worn incorrectly, like the leg straps are very loose when they're supposed to be quite tight. And so comfortabi comfor comfortability is very, very important in making sure that people wear the uh, PPE that they're supposed to be wearing. Devices with adjustable features like chin straps or head straps, uh, like respirators, they, they must be comfortable they must be ergonomic. They must be. Uh, they must not cause additional problems. Because again, going back to that uh, comfort issue, whenever someone's in, uncomfortable, they're just not going to wear the PPE. They're going to wear it when you when a manager comes by or when somebody from the safety office comes by. They're going to wear it then. But then, when no one's looking, or they think that no one's looking, uh, they'll do what they want to do. And so that opens up everybody for a bunch of liabilities that we just don't want. So that is critical and very important. And finally, we're going to move on to the last two uh, components of the PPE assessment process and that is reassessment of hazards. Okay, so we're going to go through and just double check to see if we, we missed anything and to ensure that we've properly addressed all the hazards in the work environment. And finally, we're going to review the selection guidelines and, and justify why we believe a PPE is required for this particular hazard. And so if we can follow this general process of PPE assessment, most of the time what employers find is that they, they do a really good job implementing uh, personal protective equipment in the workplace and they have every reason to justify what they require and why they require it. So it helps with training, it helps with employee understanding, it ensures that more people wear the PPE and so we see that overall the organizational safety culture is significantly enhanced and improved. And so if you have any other questions about PPE or PPE assessments, Feel free to contact me at your discretion. I'd love to discuss it in more depth. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.